What do you make of those very hawkish comments and uh, implications for European markets? Uh, good morning, Karen. Good to be good to be with you again. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, I would say they're not necessarily surprising. Uh, what I note, however, from, from Schnabel's comments, and maybe that, that could apply to the Fed and to many other central banks, is the central banks can't do everything about you know, taming inflation on its own when it's partly driven by, uh, by um, high energy prices. So the only tool that they have in terms of uh, high, if hiking rates will curb demand, uh, that will be lagged, as, uh, as we, we, we've been discussing or you've been discussing earlier <coughs> on the program. Uh, with, uh, with a chief economist from Mirabo, but this is this is something that um, they have to do. They have to kind of normalize the policy, and at the same time, they've, been, they've got to be careful that you know it doesn't need. They don't need or they don't want to uh, to bring the economies into recession just by doing that. They've got to be careful, mindful about that, and and obviously the energy challenge, energy story, will be over us, and it's not necessarily for all central banks to do all the job, but it's a complex job. And maybe we've got to get used to higher energy prices, full stop. Antoine, it's been an uncomfortable journey for investors following the language from central banks, watching the oil price and every data point that crosses uh, every other week. But uh, what do you think it means now in terms of positioning on markets? Because we've had a rally, but not everyone believes that this is a sustainable rally we've witnessed. Yes, we. I think we've we had this summer rally. Obviously, we we um, expectations, especially from the uh, from, from the Fed, that they could be a little. You know, uh, they will continue to tighten, uh, but they might tighten at a slightly slower pace. So that kind of reassured the market. Partly, we've also had um, slightly, you know, at least uh, not an inflation level or inflation numbers. It was. Uh, not as surprising to the upside as, as in the past, so that kind of gave confidence uh, for investors that there could be some room for a rally. Um, however, when we look at the flows, it, it doesn't seem that the flows uh, from investors, whether it's through ETFs or through, uh, through, through, through the larger positioning of State Street uh, custody book, for example, we, we, we don't really see a lot of buyers in the equity risk. So uh, obviously, this is, um, this is not necessarily a rally that has got very, very strong legs. Afterwards, it's also about sentiment. I think sentiment has been improving. Um, the, the, the positioning was really very, very bearish or very underweight risk. So there was a bit of, um, of correction from that standpoint. But um, I think everyone's still very cautious. Uh, it still is a complex economic environment to, de to, de to decipher as well. And, um, and when we look at, at the positioning, positioning of investors, at what, what they have been doing in the market, three ETF flows at least, uh, they've been selling equities at least in, in the European ETF market, and they've been buying bonds over the past few, uh, few weeks. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.